Buddha's teachings. His Compassion and Vows 1. The spirit of Buddha is that of great loving-kindness and compassion. The great loving-kindness is the spirit to save all people by any and all means. The great compassion is the spirit that prompts it to be ill with the illness of people, to suffer with their suffering. Your suffering is my suffering, and your happiness is my happiness, said Buddha, and, just as a mother always loves her child, he does not forget that spirit even for a single moment for it is the nature of Buddhahood to be compassionate. The Buddha's spirit of compassion is stimulated according to the needs of men. Man's faith is the reaction to this spirit, and it leads him to enlightenment, just as a mother realizes her motherhood by loving her child. Then the child, reacting to that love, feels safe and at ease. Yet people do not understand the spirit of Buddha and go on suffering from the illusions and desires that arise from their ignorance. They suffer from their own deeds accumulated through worldly passions and wander about among the mountains of delusion with the heavy burden of their evil deeds. 2. Do not think that the compassion of the Buddha is only for the present life. It is a manifestation of the timeless compassion of the eternal Buddha that has been operative since unknown time, when mankind went astray due to ignorance. The eternal Buddha always appears before people in the most friendly forms and brings to them the wisest methods of relief. Buddha, born a prince, left the comforts of his home to live a life of asceticism. Through the practice of silent meditation he realized enlightenment. He preached the Dharma, the teaching, among his fellow men and finally manifested it by his earthly death. The working of Buddhahood is as everlasting as human ignorance is endless. And as the depth of ignorance is bottomless, so Buddha's compassion is boundless. When Buddha decided to break from the worldly life, he made four great vows. One, to save all people. Two, to renounce all worldly desires. 3. To learn all the teachings, and 4. To attain perfect enlightenment. These vows were manifestations of the love and compassion that are fundamental to the nature of Buddhahood. 3. Buddha first taught himself to avoid the sin of killing any living creature. He wished that all people might know the blessedness of a long life. Buddha trained himself to avoid the sin of stealing. He wished that all people might have everything they needed. Buddha trained himself to avoid ever committing adultery. He wished that all people might know the blessedness of a pure spirit and not suffer from insatiable desires. Buddha, aiming at his ideal, trained himself to remain free from all deception. He wished that all people might know the tranquility of mind that would follow in speaking the truth. He trained himself to avoid double talk. He wished that all people might know the joy of fellowship. He trained himself to avoid abusing others, and then he wished that all might have the serene mind that would follow by living in peace with others. He kept himself free from idle talk, and then wished that all might know the blessedness of sympathetic understanding. Buddha, aiming at his ideal, trained himself to keep free from greed, and by this virtuous deed he wished that all people might know the peacefulness that would go with this freedom. He trained himself to avoid anger, and he wished that all people might love one another. He trained himself to avoid ignorance, and he wished that all people might understand and not disregard the law of causation. Thus Buddha's compassion embraces all people, and his constant consideration is for their happiness. He loves people as parents love their children, and he wishes the highest blessedness for them, namely, that they will be able to pass beyond this ocean of life and death. Dharma, True Teaching Chapter 1, Causation 1. 
The Fourfold Noble Truth 1. The world is full of suffering. Birth is suffering. Old age is suffering. Sickness and death are sufferings. To meet a man whom one hates is suffering. To be separated from a beloved one is suffering. To be vainly struggling to satisfy one's needs is suffering. In fact, life that is not free from desire and passion is always involved with distress. This is called the truth of suffering. The cause of human suffering is undoubtedly found in the thirsts of the physical body and in the illusions of worldly passion. If these thirsts and illusions are traced to their source, they are found to be rooted in the intense desires of physical instincts. Thus, desire, having a strong will to live as its basis, seeks that which it feels desirable, even if it is sometimes death. This is called the truth of the cause of suffering. If desire, which lies at the root of all human passion, can be removed, then passion will die out and all human suffering will be ended. This is called the truth of the cessation of suffering. In order to enter into a state where there is no desire and no suffering, one must follow a certain path. The stages of this noble eightfold path are right view, right thought, right speech, right behavior, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. This is called the truth of the noble path to the cessation of the cause of suffering. People should keep these truths clearly in mind, for the world is filled with suffering, and if anyone wishes to escape from suffering, he must sever the ties of worldly passion, which is the sole cause of suffering. The way of life which is free from all worldly passion and suffering can only be known through enlightenment, and enlightenment can only be attained through the discipline of the noble eightfold path. 2. All those who are seeking enlightenment must understand the fourfold noble truth. Without understanding this, they will wander about interminably in the bewildering maze of life's illusions. Those who understand this fourfold noble truth are called the people who have acquired the eyes of enlightenment. Therefore, those who wish to follow the Buddha's teachings should concentrate their minds on this fourfold noble truth and seek to make their understanding of its meaning clear. In all ages, a saint, if he is a true saint, is one who understands it and teaches it to others. When a man clearly understands the fourfold noble truth, then the noble eightfold path will lead him away from greed. And if he is free from greed, he will not quarrel with the world, he will not kill, nor steal, nor commit adultery, nor cheat, nor abuse, nor flatter, nor envy, nor lose his temper, nor forget the transiency of life, nor will he be unjust. 3. Following the noble path is like entering a dark room with a light in the hand. The darkness will all be cleared away and the room will be filled with light. People who understand the meaning of the noble truths and have learned to follow the noble path are in possession of the light of wisdom that will clear away the darkness of ignorance. Buddha leads people merely by indicating to them the fourfold noble truth. Those who understand it properly will attain enlightenment. They will be able to guide and support others in this bewildering world, and they will be worthy of trust. When the fourfold noble truth is clearly understood, all the sources of worldly passion are dried up. Advancing from this fourfold noble truth, the disciples of Buddha will attain all other precious truths. They will gain the wisdom and insight to understand all meanings and will become capable of preaching the Dharma to all the peoples of the world. 2. Causation 1. There are causes for all human suffering, and there is a way by which they may be ended, because everything in the world is the result of a vast concurrence of causes and conditions, and everything disappears as these causes and conditions change and pass away. Rain falls, winds blow, plants bloom, leaves mature and are blown away. These phenomena are all interrelated with causes and conditions, 
and are brought about by them and disappear as the causes and conditions change. One is born through the conditions of parentage. His body is nourished by food. His spirit is nurtured by teaching and experience. Therefore, both flesh and spirit are related to conditions and are changed as conditions change. As a net is made up by a series of knots, so everything in this world is connected by a series of knots. If anyone thinks that the mesh of a net is an independent, isolated thing, he is mistaken. It is called a net because it is made up of a series of connected meshes, and each mesh has its place and responsibilities in relation to other meshes. 2. Blossoms come about because of a series of conditions that lead up to their blooming. Leaves are blown away because a series of conditions lead up to it. Blossoms do not appear independently, nor does a leaf fall of itself, out of its season. So everything has its coming forth and passing away. Nothing can be independent without any change. It is the everlasting and unchanging rule of this world that everything is created by a series of causes and conditions, and everything disappears by the same rule. Everything changes. Nothing remains constant. 3. The Dependent Origination 1. Where is the source of human grief, lamentation, pain, and agony? Is it not to be found in the fact that people are generally desirous? They cling obstinately to lives of wealth and honor, comfort and pleasure, excitement and self-indulgence, ignorant of the fact that the desire for these very things is the source of human suffering. From its beginning, the world has been filled with a succession of calamities, over and above the unavoidable facts of illness, old age, and death. But if one carefully considers all the facts, one must be convinced that at the basis of all suffering lies the principle of craving desire. If avarice can be removed, human suffering will come to an end. Ignorance is manifested in greed that fills the human mind. It comes from the fact that men are unaware of the true reason for the succession of things. From ignorance and greed there spring impure desires for things that are, in fact, unobtainable, but for which men restlessly and blindly search. Because of ignorance and greed, people imagine discriminations where, in reality, there are no discriminations. Inherently, there is no discrimination of right and wrong in human behavior. But people, because of ignorance, imagine such distinctions and judge them as right or wrong. Because of their ignorance, all people are always thinking wrong thoughts and always losing the right viewpoint, and, clinging to their egos, they take wrong actions. As a result, they become attached to a delusive existence. Making their deeds the field for their egos, using the working of discrimination of the mind as seed, beclouding the mind by ignorance, fertilizing it with the rain of craving desires, irrigating it by the willfulness of egotism, they add the conception of evil and carry this incarnation of delusion about with them. 2. In reality, therefore, it is their own mind that causes the delusions of grief, lamentation, pain, and agony. This whole world of delusion is nothing but a shadow caused by the mind. And yet it is also from this same mind that the world of enlightenment appears. 3. In this world there are three wrong viewpoints. If one clings to these viewpoints, then all things in this world are but to be denied. First, some say that all human experience is based on destiny. Second, some hold that everything is created by God and controlled by His will. Third, some say that everything happens by chance without having any cause or condition. If all has been decided by destiny, both good deeds and evil deeds are predetermined. Weal and woe are predestined. Nothing would exist that has not been foreordained. Then all human plans and efforts for improvement and progress would be in vain, and humanity would be without hope. The same is true of the other viewpoints. 
Or if everything in the last resort is in the hands of an unknowable God, or of blind chance, what hope has humanity except in submission? It is no wonder that people holding these conceptions lose hope and neglect effort to act wisely and to avoid evil. In fact, these three conceptions or viewpoints are all wrong. Everything is a succession of appearances whose source is the accumulation of causes and conditions.